everybody. It is Carla with Carla's Clutter Crafts. Um, I'm here to do first of at least three videos I'm going to be doing this weekend. Um, we're going to start off with the cute watermelon truck and do a summer design. Today I put this white behind my wreath form because I felt like maybe you guys couldn't see when I'm putting the pipe cleaners on. Um, so hopefully that's going to help us. Go ahead and get started with showing you how I do these. I um, I'm wiring it with 18 pipe cleaners total. I've done half of it here so that I can show you that there's th three in each section. A section is in between each of these two crossbars and we have a total of six sections. So we're gonna put one on the inside two wires right in the middle of the two crossbars then we're going to come to the outside two and go in the middle of the crossbar in this pipe cleaner and then come to the other side here and do the same thing in the middle of these two, okay? I've been running around crazy, so I'm out of breath. Okay, so just to show you, I do my inside two first, come in the middle of these two crossbars the best as I can, as close as I can, and then just fold my pipe cleaners up and when I twist my knot, I do it over this inside ring because that will make your mesh and ribbons more secure. If you do it on the outside, they tend to be kind of wobbly. And then between this pipe cleaner and this crossbar, we're gonna do one on the outside too. Same thing, we're gonna twist our knot over the ring that is to the inside. Come to the opposite side in between this pipe cleaner and this crossbar. We're gonna do one here in the middle on the outside two rings. Okay, and we're just gonna complete this process in these last two sections we have here. And when we get done, we'll have six pipe cleaners in the middle and 12 on the outside, so a total of 18. And I pull them kind of tight because you don't really want your pipe cleaners to be sliding around and moving around when you're trying to add your materials. Computer's still acting up everybody, so I'm not gonna be able to see comments again. But I did still want to go live so that you guys could see me make these designs. I had several customer orders yesterday, so I'm gonna be doing at least three wreaths because I've got to fulfill those orders. This is what it looks like when we get all of our pipe cleaners on and I just push my inside ones to the inside and my outside ones to the outside that makes it easier for me when I start laying my mesh in okay. and then for the mesh we're going to be using this it's like a green and burlap stripe together and I got this I'm pretty sure this came from craft outlet it's 10 inches wide and I cut all the mesh pieces 16 to 17 inches long. Okay, and then I have this really pretty red and I got this from bbcrafts.com. So that's one of their um, value meshes. So they're like three to four dollars a roll. It's a really good value and it's weather resistant. So that's always good. I'm gonna go ahead and unroll a few of these. to separate them and then it's easier for me to just go ahead and create the curls well actually cruffles we're going to be doing cruffles today makes a big old pile <laughs> Okay, I'm 
I'm gonna move the green back over here because that's gonna actually be our second layer. We're gonna do red all the way along the bottom. And we're only gonna start off working on these outside 12 pipe cleaners. Okay, and to make my crackles, I just lay my mesh out in front of me. I roll the first end, I fold it over, and then two, three, four, which gives me a nice little curl on the end. And then I turn that away from me, do the same thing on the opposite end, fold four times. Then I turn my curls face down. And someone asked me um, the other day, uh, after the live, why I do that. And it's just because it folds these, it puts the cut edges, the good, see how this is sticking out just a little bit here? This cut edge, it puts that downward so there's less friction and less fraying. That's the reason I do it that way. You can put, put them up or down. I just prefer to do down. And when you put it in your pipe cleaner, put your finished edge to the inside and the outside and make sure that you pull them in there really tight. You want your base to be really secure. Okay, so we'll do another one. Curl the first end, I fold it over one. Use my pinkies to hold these ends down. Two, three, four. And then turn that curl away from you. One, two, three, four. Turn your curls face down. Scrunch it right down the middle. Pinch your two sides together and take your clip off. It looks like you have kind of like a little bow in your hand. And then we're just gonna lay that in the very next pipe cleaner. Pull it tight and give it a couple twists and open up our next one to get it ready. So after I do this watermelon, I'm gonna be doing, um, I have a pink Easter truck I need to do, and then I also have a lemon design that I need to do. So I'm not sure, I have both of them ready to go, so I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do next. But probably we'll do it also today. I don't wanna get behind on my orders. Since I work by myself, it kind of scares me that, you know, I might get more orders than I could actually fulfill so I try to stay on top of them if anybody has any questions or anything even though I don't have my computer and I can't see the comments I'll definitely answer after the live like I usually do Try to see if I can get it to work before I go live again. about halfway around the base. <clears throat> looking up to see if I can see the comments. I see that there's a comment there. Hi, I think it's Pam. Uh, I wish my vision was better. <laughs> or my phone was bigger, one of the two. Maybe I need to buy an iPad to go live with.
really like doing in the summertime the fruit designs. So I've done several of those, the lemons and the watermelons and the strawberries, and I've even done oranges and limes. Kind of refreshing, so it reminds me of summer. My stomach is really growling on you guys. I'm, I hope you can't hear that. And just uh, wanted to mention when you do this first layer of mesh, if you decide to make this design, um, you will still be able to see your wireframe and that is normal. So even after you get this first layer of mesh on, you can still see that. Um, but once you get all the materials, the ribbons and the second layer of mesh and everything added, you won't, you'll no longer see any of that wireframe. hold it up there and show you how you can see that mesh is kind of see-through so you can still see the wireframe at this point but by the time we're done you won't be able to see any of that outside to do and then we'll start working on our ribbons. my mesh so that it's lighting right and that's what it looks like once you get your first layer of mesh on still kind of thin and sparse okay and then the ribbons that we're working with um, we are going to be using we got two watermelon ribbons I have this watermelon with like a black and white check pattern in the background and we need nine of those. That's a two and a half inch ribbon and they're cut to 12 inches long. So nine of those. And then I have those, this ribbon is available. I've seen it at Deco Exchange and then also at Craft Outlet. So both of those places have that. And then we're gonna use this watermelon ribbon, which is a little bit, um, it's got like a beige background. I got seeds in between the pieces of watermelon. This I ordered from Amazon. I ordered a pack of ribbons that had different fruits and this was part of that package from Amazon. And then we're gonna be using, and you'll need nine of those as well. So nine of each of the watermelons. And then I'm using this black and white check to match with our first ribbon. And you are gonna need six of these, six 12 inch pieces. And then you're gonna take three of those six and cut them in half to make six inch pieces, okay? And then the same with this green um, chevron pattern. 
we're gonna use it and we've cut it 12 inches and you're gonna need six of these and you're gonna take three of those six and cut them in half to make six inch pieces, okay? So that is all of our ribbons and this also came from Amazon with the fruit pack that I ordered. So both of these are from Amazon and both of these are from Craft Outlet. Um, but Deco Exchange, I just seen on their website, also has this ribbon, okay? So I'm gonna lay all my 12 inch pieces aside because I'm gonna first work with my six inch pieces. Whenever you cut them in half, you should have should have six of each for a total of 12 of your six inch pieces. And I'm just gonna go around on top of the 12 pieces of mesh that we just put in. And I'm gonna lay one piece. To do that, I lay it in front of me. I just scrunch on the flat side where we cut it in half and pinch it between my fingers like that. And then I'm just gonna lay it right in the middle of this piece of mesh coming straight outward, straight out the middle. Twist it tight because you want it to have a really good hold and then just fluff it up and curl your ends out. And then we're gonna rotate these collars. So next I'll do green. Same process, scrunch the flat edge, pinch it between your fingers and stick it in the next pipe cleaner. Pull it tight. it out. Okay, so we'll do this real quick all the way around. I think I'm going to get rid of this white styrofoam now because I think you guys can see what I'm doing pretty good now. Now that I've got that first layer of mesh on there. I just think with the pattern on my counter it's hard to see that wire frame and what I'm doing. Now we need green. And we're just doing the same process all the way around, just keeping it right in the middle of the piece of mesh that you're putting it on top of. Hey, I can't see your name. Terrible, terrible. But hi, thank you for joining me. Thank you for everybody who's watching. I will respond to all of your comments afterwards. So please, if you have questions, just go ahead and leave them and I'll answer you as soon as I get done. I'm having computer difficulties. So, um, and that's normally what I use to be able to see my comments. goes pretty fast and after we get done with these six inches we're going to lay in some of our 12 inch pieces three wreaths that I'm making this weekend were actually all ordered by one person so that was awesome so 
good for their last one, I think. So I've got some extra pieces here, that's okay. Okay, I'll lay those extra ones back there. Okay, and now we need our watermelon. And on the bottom, we're gonna need six of each one. And what we're going to do is lay them over top of the six inch pieces. So I'm gonna start with this one. And the way that I do my 12 inch piece of ribbon is I just scrunch down the middle. I fold it back towards myself and make a V and make sure my ends line up so that my ribbon tails will be even. And then I'm going to place, see I think I'm gonna put this over top of the green. No, I'm gonna put this over top of the black and white. The way you do it is up to you. I'm just uh, gonna put those together, I think, because they match. Sometimes I do the opposite to spread out my buffalo check pattern. Um, but I think this one is gonna look better over top of the green. And so I'm just doing these all the same way. Scrunch up the middle, V it back towards myself, and then I'm gonna cut off these pipe cleaners because we're not gonna be adding anything else to that. And I'm gonna fold it down and pinch it. Folding it down and squeezing it helps make your ribbon secure. Be careful when you're cutting these off not to cut your mesh. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm being the 12 inch pieces around our six inch pieces. That way some of each of the tails that we put in are visible. Okay, so back to the black and white. I'm just rotating each pattern. And I'm just arching, when I fluff my ribbon tails out, I'm just arching them outward. I push up underneath here next to the pipe cleaner and then just kind of make an arch and then curl my ends downward.
more. And then we'll be able to start on our second row of mesh. So when you're adding um, your ribbon tails, when you do just the mesh, it's still pretty see-through. Um, but then just the addition of the ribbon tails will take up a lot of that space. You will still be able to see the wire in places because we've not come around on that center part yet. Um, so that's, I just wanted to mention that that's normal, that I can still in some areas see the wire frame at this stage. But the way we lay these top pieces of mesh on is going to totally take care of that. And then we're going to add more ribbon on top of that wire. This is our last one. Okay, and when I put my last piece of ribbon in, I always come over to the right of it and pull that ribbon tail out and put it over top so they're all laying in the same pattern okay so next we're going to do cruffles again and we're going to put them on the inside six pipe cleaners now so to do that we need to reach in between the mesh and pull those pipe cleaners to the outside piece of mesh out and we're just going to do the same process curl our first end you can see yep put a clip on it turn it away from us same thing on the other end turn the two curls face down put your two sides together it looks like a little bow so now this time, and this is part of the process that helps us finish covering up that wire frame that we can still see in some spots, we're going to place these in with the finished edge to the right and to the left. So on the bottom we did the inside and outside, now we're going to do the right and the left. And when you put this piece of mesh in, don't pull it down real tight because it'll sink down in your frame to the bottom. And we don't want that because we're trying to build our design up to make it fuller and your ribbon tails if you pull it down in there too far your ribbon tails won't lay right either when we add them okay so we got six of these to do And then when I lay each of these in, I just kind of line up the edges here so that they touch. And then go on to my next one. This green and uh, beige striped mesh is a little bit heavier, so it um, provides a little more coverage than that value red mesh we put on the bottom. 
thicker. Two more. last one and then we'll be ready to do our second layer of ribbons This is what we have so far, and now we cannot see the wireframe at the base. And we're going to go ahead and add our top layer of ribbons. So I'm going to keep the same pattern that I used around the bottom, and I'm going to do the green with this watermelon. And to do my top ribbons, I'm going to use two 12 inch pieces, make a small X in front of me. And then I just scrunch up the middle, pinch the two sides together, and you have kind of like an X. Okay, then we're just gonna put it in our next pipe cleaner. I'm sorry guys, I can't see those comments. I feel so bad about that. I will answer you after the live though. My computer is giving me fits. And then once we put this in, we're just gonna clip off the end like we did on the bottom, push it down in and squeeze it. And then this time we're going to fan our tails out into like a X shape. Okay, so just like that. And we're going to re we're going to alternate the pattern again all the way around these top six pieces of mesh we just put in. Twist in my pipe cleaner three or four times before I clip it off. And I'm leaving probably about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch on there to push down in and squeeze. Okay, back to the green. It's the same process, make a little X Scrunch up the middle and pinch it between your fingers. Put it straight down in your pipe cleaner. And then just arch out the same way that you did around the bottom. And 
arch out down here next to the pipe cleaner and then I just curl my outside ends under a little bit. green one Oops. and when I'm crisscrossing them I'm, I always put my primary patterns on top so in this case it would be my watermelons I want those to be most prominent I think I forgot to mention that and our last one and then we'll be ready to attach our sign our little truck calling watermelons So this is what we have so far with all of our ribbons. It's about five to six inches deep and it's about 24 to 25 inches wide. And then we're just going to position our little truck um, right in the middle of this top layer of cruffles. So right in there. But first we need to get it ready to attach. And I'm going to use my floral wire, 26 gauge. I get this at the Dollar Tree. And then I'm also gonna use my metal hole punch that I bought on Amazon. I prefer the one that's made of all metal. And this is an MDF sign, but the metal hole punch works beautifully on the sign. So I'm gonna just do a hole here at each end of the truck. one of the reasons that I like, I'm going to try to show you on the camera, right there is the hole that I made. It's very teeny tiny, so it's not really noticeable once you attach it to your wreath. So that way you don't have a bunch of big holes in your sign, because this, uh, this already has this one little hole up here from where the hanger was attached to it, actually two of them. So I'm going to use my ribbon tails to kind of hide those and disguise those. So I don't want to add another bunch of big holes. Okay, and then I'm gonna use this red wire. I roll off um, rather large pieces to make it easier for me to work down through all the mesh and ribbon. So basically what I do is I roll off more than I need just because it's much easier on my hands. And then I just cut the excess off once I'm done. And you get a hundred feet of this for a dollar twenty-five, so it's not not expensive. Okay, 
and so to put my wire in I'm just going to feed it through the hole pull it through the back I'm going to turn my sign upside down I'm going to line my wires up so that they're pretty close to even and then I'm going to twist a knot and when I twist my knot I want to twist it over top of the hole that I made that way my wires will be coming out of the back of my sign and not off from the side. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Our knot over top of the hole. Okay, and then we're ready to attach it. We'll attach these wires to the wreath form that we started with, the base of our wreath. I think I'm going to face it this way. I'm trying to just move these curls all out of my way and get it pushed in there. start feeding. Actually, I'm going to go this way so I can kind of fit in between these crumples. I think that's going to make it easier to attach. And now that I've got it most of the way in there, I'm going to feed these wires down through this mesh. And when I get to the bottom, I'm going to wrap around two of the rings of the frame. I swear this is the hardest part of making a wreath, you guys. Okay, and once you get your wire down through there, you just twist the wire around itself. I'm not gonna pull it snug or twist it all the way yet because I want to come over and do this side and make sure my sign is centered and stuff before I commit. Okay, so I'm gonna feed it down through. Wrap around both. Two of the rings and I'm on the with this truck I'm on the inside two ring or not the inside the two middle rings okay so I think that position is pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and pull down just slightly on this because you want it to be snug um, but we don't want it to sink clear to the base of our wreath so you want it kind of floating on the top and then you can always adjust these um, so they lay around your truck and don't cover it up. And I'm just twisting the wire around itself a bunch of times. And then I'm gonna cut off this end. Should not have used my scissors for that. I should have used my wire cutter. Okay, and then once I cut it off, I have probably a inch and a half to two inches left here. I'm just going to take this and wrap it around this wire ring and then push it up inside of the wreath so that it doesn't poke somebody. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing over here. But before I tighten this down, I want to pull this crumple out so I don't mash it. So I'm just pulling down slightly to make it snug and then twisting the wire around itself. it around the wire ring and push it up inside and then just do a final check make sure I like how the crumples are laying and that my sign's not being covered up make sure my tails didn't get too messed up in the process and that's it guys there is our cute little watermelon truck wreath, 24 to 25 inches wide, 4 to 5 inches thick. So pretty good size.
All right. Thank you guys for joining me. I'll be sure to um, hop on and respond to your comments and questions. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And I'll be back in a little while, some point this evening, and we'll either do a pink Easter truck or a lemon wreath. So um, thank you, and I'll see you soon.